So welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my slides. And uh, I'm just uh, reusing some slides from earlier this year. Um, so pretend you're at an actual workshop in Berlin, but no, you're in the safety of your homes. So today uh, we're going to talk about the common workflow language. I'm just going to kind of explain how it came to be and what it is and what it's for and what it's not for. And then afterwards, I'm going to do some live coding to give people an experience of what does it look like using the common workflow language to describe tools and connect those together to make a workflow. And I'll be using a real example I just finished um, earlier today where I converted um, one of our participants uh, proposed standard operating procedures to a CWL workflow. Um, so it'll be very, uh, very fresh. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I'm based in Berlin, but I'm an American, been living in Europe for four years. And I have a background in both uh, bioinformatics and computer system administration. And it's also been my pleasure to uh, participate, contribute to, and now be a part of the Elixir network. And I uh, am now part of Elixir Netherlands. So before we get too far, uh, we should just define our terms. So in, when I talk about workflows mostly, uh, I mean a very specific type of workflow. Uh, you know, there's lots of different types of workflows. There's things we do in the real world, like in a lab or business processes. Um, and then there's also uh, on, uh, computational workflows. And those are can vary. There are things where we connect different services or orchestrate them. And then typically in bioinformatics, when we say workflow or pipeline, we're talking about command line tools that we're running one after another. And the common workflow language came from the, the bioinformatics community, it actually was started at a hackathon at the um, Open Bioinformatics Foundation's um, CodeFest uh, coming up on five years ago. So yeah, for us, workflows are batch style, automated data analysis workflows made from command line tools. So that's one, so this is the common workflow language for this sort of workflow. So CWL, it's a project and a, this project has made some standards. And so we've delivered the standard, uh, we've delivered a, a specification for it, um, a schema, that's computer readable and the spec is mostly for humans. And these workflows are meant to be um, portable to different environments. So I've been running this on my laptop uh, these few days, uh, but we can run it on a computing cluster or from a cloud provider. And that I don't have to make any changes to the workflow to run it someplace else. The C in CWL common means we're targeting the features that users commonly use and are commonly available in different workflow engines. CWL is not a product or a tool. It's not something you install or pay for. It's a standard that's implemented by different workflow engines. There is a CWL reference runner, um, and that's made, made use of, but it's mostly for research purposes. So standards are good because it means that we can move around between different implementations. It means we can actually innovate because there's a, that agreement of what we're doing here. And um, it's also about fairness. So, uh, you know, personally, I actually would have been fine if Galaxy had won the world and everybody had used Galaxy. It didn't happen. So, so you can almost think that CWL is taking out that concept of workflows from Galaxy and making them more portable among systems. Uh, so I mentioned this timeline, yeah, began back in 2014. Also, oh, we're coming up at six years, my goodness. We've had a couple of releases over the years, some different commercial vendors, you know, IBM has, a, has an implementation. And uh, very soon, I'd say probably within a month, we will release CBIL 1.2 with workflow conditionals. And I know this is a uh, frequently requested uh, feature. Pardon me, make sure I saw the chat room. Okay, so back to the slides. Um, so uh, the design principles, you know, as a standard, we wanna be useful to a couple different circumstances. 
So not only do we want to be useful for folks who just write workflows all day long, we want to be helpful to visualize workflows, create graphical user interfaces for configuring them. Um, we support uh, tool, uh, we want to support people converting to and from the standard. So we want to be very explicit. And uh, we definitely support the ex extensions. We want vendors and users to use CWL in new directions, but just do it in a very clear way so we know that you're extending things. Uh, the CWL community is also a big fan of linked data. Um, but if you don't know anything about linked data or Sparkle or RDF, you can just ignore all that. But those benefits will be there later when you need them. So the so CWL is the model is taking that program we run at the command line at bioinformaticians, a SAM tool sort, for example, and turning that into a well-described function. So we'll name what that function is, what the program is going to be, what are the inputs, what are the outputs, give everything types. And then we connect these functions up to form a full workflow. Uh, and I'll show more of this in detail later. So beyond just saying how to run the command, we can also give additional information that helps us estimate the resources we'll need to use. Now, if you're just sitting down writing a workflow and you want to get something done, this is not going to matter to you. But later, if you're running your workflow on thousands of samples uh, or uh, you know, some of the steps are very long running, you'll, you will want to help you, your workflow system better schedule your workflow. Um, better place the jobs so that they can run faster and use the resources more efficiently. And so we support this in the CWL model. So you can come back after you do your basic uh, description and add on this extra information. In the common workflow language object model, we don't think of our data as just a path on the, on the disk. We really, because we're not always running on a local system. So for us, data has an identifier, which supports the FAIR principles. And it means we can also do optimizations based on where the data is, especially like reference data. If we're using patient data over here, and reference data over there, we might schedule or deal with privacy concerns based on that lo location. And then just a little bit how we run ourselves as a project, we follow we're kind of an um, unusual uh, standards project because CWL is free to use, free to implement, uh, free to contribute to, free to read. There's, we try not to get in the way of anybody participating in this. Um, and it turns out the way we were running this basically as an open source project aligns with these so-called modern paradigm for standards development. Um, that IEEE and the W3C and others uh, put up a few years ago. So, hey, it turns out we were doing the right thing all along. Uh, but we, we're here to not tell people what to do, but to build this together. Seedwell is a, a journey and a community. Um, of course, we, we support software containers, um, the use of the software requirements hint, or the direct Docker requirement. You can say which Docker format container you want to use, and many Seedwell Workflow engines can run that with Docker or with Singularity Engine or all sorts of things. Also, you can use these features. Maybe you have a local Conda package installed or a Debian package. And there's lots of different uh, implementations of CWL. You can go to the website and learn more about them. I'm happy to answer questions as well. Um, for example, there's implementation for Rihanna that, you know, from the uh, physics uh, community uh, where they will able to add it to their engine. Uh, these implementations can run in these different environments. So if you can think of a computing environment, there's probably a CWL uh, workflow compatible engine out there that can run there. There's lots of editors and viewers. I'm going to show a plugin for Visual Studio uh, after the slides. Um, so please check those out. And if you want to see a very full, complicated pipeline, I have this example I show off from EBI, where we took one of those classic EBI services, which we love these EBI services, but they was always kind of opaque. What are they doing behind the curtain, right? Well, it turns out they were had 9,500 lines and three different scripting languages, not to do any analysis, but just to get it running on their system. And you can imagine that wasn't going to run in any other server in the world but EBI's. 
So we did a project a while back to convert that to common workflow language. Uh, so not only did we make their workflow more portable, we made it more understandable and reduced training costs um, within the team as well. So I think this is a great model for, uh, we love our service providers because they bring expertise and compute resources. Um, they make good choices, they maintain things. It would be nice if we could still share and co-create with them the workflows that are, they're running for us. So I think this is a great model for Elixir and other places around the world to consider, um, kind of uh, let us peek behind the curtain and participate more. It's more fair, right? You actually understand what's going on um, uh, behind the service. So Seabells, um, you know, we started on, on a whiteboard at a hackathon and we've gotten a lot of friends over the years, but it's not just uh, the life sciences. As I mentioned, um, we're seeing usage in uh, radio astronomy, digital humanities and physics. So um, we could also talk about the interaction with uh, research objects or our crates, but I think probably others could go into better detail about that than me. Um, but certainly if you want to talk about provenance, that's uh, something we can discuss. But let's maybe go and look at some real CWL uh, code. So I'm going to quit out of the slides and pop over. Just want to check in. Can everybody hearing me fine? Yeah, we're hearing you fine, uh, Michael. Hey, continue. Okay. I don't know if there have been questions. I can't see the chat window because I'm screen sharing. So, um, so we had a participant. I think he's actually on the call. Who's been sharing? Uh, Ambarish uh, Kumar has been sharing some standard operating procedures that they wrote uh, that they're sort of suggesting. Um, for detecting, uh, for uh, pulling out uh, COV uh, Corona novel to uh, genome variants. Um, so initially I was delivered this write-up explaining what was done. So it's kind of semi-structured that's, you know, there's some command lines here. Um, I know Ambrose has also been developing versions in Whittle and Galaxy. Uh, but these last few days, I've been taking this and turning it into CWL. So I just want to show you what I made. And then what I'm going to do is do undo one of the steps, and we'll kind of redo that together, live coding. And then maybe we'll even run it with test data, see how we're doing with time. I think we're doing OK with time. So I'm running Visual Studio Code. Um, so, But I'm using the open, pure open source release. You can download from Microsoft as well. And I've got a plugin. If, so if you search in the marketplace, there's a, pr a plugin called CWL that uses this uh, code base called Benton from Rabbix and uh, Kaushik Ghosh wrote all this. This is a language server. Basically, it teaches uh, Visual Studio how to understand CWL syntax. So it gives us the nice uh, highlighting here. It's going to help us with autocomplete. And then there is this option that when you're working on a, a full workflow that you can get a, a visualization here. And the visualization is actually live. So I can actually click on the different elements and jump around the source code. And I think even if I jump around the source code, yeah, the, it's a little bolder here because, uh, well, I don't know if, the, if it works the other way around. Now, personally, I use Vim because I just use Vim for everything. Uh, but I think this is a nice way to write CWL as well. So mostly what I did was connecting existing tool descriptions together. Only a couple I had to write myself, so that was nice. Um, so people sometimes ask, you know, where do you, where do we get, um, you know, how should we find Siebel tool descriptions if we don't want to write them by hand? If you go to the website, there is a uh, an area that says, well, here's some places to look. But really, normally, what I do is I search on GitHub. So for example, today, we're going to redo a, uh, a SAM, tools, um, SAM tools index. SAM tools, what are we doing? I'm going to redo, <laughs> yeah, SAM tools index. And um, if you search online, um, there is a, a lot of code out there. So I think, let's see here. So how, let's find it. GitHub knows of. 21,000 CWL descriptions. Now, a lot of these are repeats or forks of things. 
But if you just sort of add in the program name in the search command there, you know, you can kind of narrow things down and see if there's one that you can uh, modify for your own needs. But right now, I'm going to write one from scratch because I think it's going to be more interesting to find out. Um, another place specifically for bioinformatics is we're asking people to share their tool descriptions, if they're bioinformatic tool descriptions, on, um, uh, on this GitHub repo, which I thought we had linked from. Oh, no, here it is, the Common Workflow Library. So if you've got a bioinformatic tool description, we've been asking people to send pull requests into here. So for example, Francois um, has been sending me pull requests and I've got another one to review. So here you can find just a lot of high quality tool descriptions. If you know the Galaxy, this is kind of like the tool shed. Not as fancy as Galaxy, right? They have like 3000 high quality, highly curated tools. Tool descriptions, um, we'll, we'll get there someday. So back to what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this command line right here and we're gonna re-implement in CWL. And uh, the name for what I'm about to do, I have from our Japanese colleagues, it's the um, Zatsu method. We're gonna do this quick and dirty to show that, um, you know, CWL can look pretty fancy and complicated, but you can actually do things simply. So I'm just going to start out by pasting in my command line tool. So I just remind myself what I'm going to do. And uh, I'll just start um, filling this out. Now I just happen to know the syntax of CWL really well because I guess I'm one of the co-founders. But uh, you, know, you might be looking up this from uh, you know, the user guide or just copy pasting from somebody else. I do that all the time too. And um, so we're going to make a command line tool description today. We know that the base command, the base command is the part that's not going to change about the tool, right? So let's talk about this command line here. So we see that we're going to redirect the output to this, to, to some file. Um, we know from experience that this probably here on the left is going to be our input file name. And we're not passing any other options or parameters. So this part of the tool is actually the fixed part. It's not going to change for the, this description. So this, this description is going to be for, let's actually document this. We have a field for that. We're going to um, index a SAM or BAM file. So because we know that this is going to change, that's going to go in our base command. For this description, we're just never, ever going to change this. So we can just add that here. Since it has a subcommand, we use this sort of extended syntax to say, yep, there's two pieces. It's always going to be SAM tools index. We know there's going to be some inputs that we'll define later. And there's going to be some outputs. So let's let's fill in these, these details. Our input is um, here the file example file name was split bam file. Um, but what are you know, these are just alignments, right? And let's just say it, we have to say at least give it some sort of type. It's a file. Uh, and we want it to show up on the um, we want it to show up on the command line. So we'll show we'll show how that works later. So we'll actually just add it to this argument section that says what goes in the command line, where we're just gonna have this sort of special syntax here where we say from the inputs that we just made one called alignments, just go ahead and put the path in the command line. Another way I could have written this that you might see sometimes is with input binding. And in this case, I just want to say, you know, it's position zero. But right now, this and this say the same thing. So we'll just only put it once to make it simpler. OK, so I think we've maybe gotten this far in. Okay, what about the rest? So this is a redirection to standard out. So we actually have a, a feature for this. and. Um, we can use this in our output section. So we now have the um, index. We have an index. This is going to be one of our outputs. We know that it's going to be a file. We actually have a shortcut in CWL. We can just say it is of type standard out. So basically, that covers this right here. So this will work to uh, probably make our index. Maybe we want to be nice and say to use a container. So we could put in. You know, under hints, we could say, you know, a Docker requirement and say, you know, what Docker pull. 
So what, you know, where, do, where should we get the container? Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. Let's just try something simple. So now we've done this, let's see if we can go ahead and try it on the command line. See if I just have the syntax correct. So I'll go ahead and launch a, a new terminal. And uh, oh, I should probably save my file first. So tools index. And get my font a little bigger. So this is that there. Great. So I can use the SIBO reference runner, which is just called CWL tool. We didn't give it a very good name. I'm going to write with the validate command just to double check my syntax. Probably that Benton plugin in Visual Studio would have caught things, but you know, I can just double check here. And what? Oh, I did make a mistake. It didn't catch. I oh, it did catch it. I just didn't give enough time. It doesn't know about there. We are capital F for file. Now, Bent, uh, this Benton plugin is a, still in development, so it doesn't know about this standard out shortcut, which is a shame because it's one of my favorites. But we can check with the reference runner, and it does validate as being legitimate CWL. So I'm going to pause here to see if anybody's got any questions. No. We don't have any raised hands. No raised hands. So I'm going to show you a version of the file I just made that's actually a little more complicated. Um, let's find what we were doing here. We have a Sam Tools index around here someplace. Live coding, it's fun. Um, maybe because I... It's a nice feature just going to the definition. So let's see the full thing that we made. Oh, actually, here's an example. It's not, not index, it's the FADIX command. Um, so we can see that you can actually go back and add additional documentation. You can tag your formats. Here we're using the EDAM ontology. And um, we should say that that is of type FASTA. That's, a, that's just a little hint. Um, in this case, here's a container we got. This container came from biocontainers.pro, so another Elixir uh, service. Uh, here we're using a kind of an advanced feature to place our input data in the working directory. And uh, because we want to grab the original sequence plus this index all at the same time. So we're using the secondary files feature for that. So back in our main workflow, just to give people a sense of the syntax, let's, let's talk about this. So we're not in a command line tool, we're in class workflow now. And we again, we have inputs like we did for command line tool, but instead of base command and, all, and arguments, we now have the steps section. And so we give our steps nice names. We say where to find the definition of that step. We say for the inputs of that step, where do you find that input? So we're connecting like workflow inputs or maybe a fixed value to the inputs of, of each uh, tool. And then maybe the tool has many, many outputs. And so we don't want to necessarily copy all of them around if we don't need them. So we say which of the outputs we actually care about. So that tool I just showed you, here's its definition right there. You know, we, we saw that it needed something called sequences in its input right there, sequences. And so we have to say, well, where do we get those sequences? Uh, was one of our workflow inputs. And it, it just has that one out. It has uh, two outputs, and we're actually grabbing this one right here, sequences with index. So it's the main file plus the .fai, the index as well. So we're going to get both of those. Um, and then all of that wires up together, and you can uh, view the workflow you know, as you edit it there. Or if you put your workflow up on GitHub, um, let's see here. I should have one. You can visualize it with a tool at view.commonwl.org 
where you just paste, let me just show you what the front screen of this looks like. Um, so again, view.com in wl.org. You just paste in your GitHub, GitLab, or public Git repository URL here, and it's gonna visualize your workflow for you in a kind of a nicer way. Um, and if you, you know, as you put in documentation, it would show up here as well. So all these tools have documentation it sort of flows through here. So it's kind of showing you how um, a structured workflow can help with not just reproducibility, um, but it also helps with understandability. So I think that's all the live coding I've got done. I'm going to stop the screen sharing and see if our uh, polite but small audience has any questions. Michael, there is a question from later on chat. I um, want to say something as well. I'm going to unmute everybody. So if you want to talk, uh, you can do so, I think. Um, I mean, we are not that many, so we can uh, allow people to, to talk. Uh, so yes, I, I have a couple of questions actually. Um, I saw that you were using the EDAM ontology for the formats. What other ontologies can be used for formats? Yeah, great question. So as I mentioned, while the common workflow language came from the bioinformatics community, we really didn't want to make it specific to bioinformatics. So EDAM, you actually have to sort of plug in. So let me go ahead and share my screen again so we can go back and look at that syntax. Um, so let's find that file. Um, we can do that, let's see here. Close my... So here, to, to use this sort of, this format field can be any, um, any URI, any URL from any ontology anywhere. Um, so specific, so, but we have to tell Cedabel which one we're using. We actually use a short version here. It could have been, instead of doing all this below, we could have just mm -hmm. written this, putting the full URL in there. But just as a shortcut, we have this namespace feature. You know, you can say this is where you get the EDM stuff. And oh, by the way, we even have a schema for that uh, ontology. And here's even the specific version of that schema that we're using. Um, but yeah, we support any anything that uh, has an ontology. You know, EDEM's branching out, and um, they're even doing non bioinformatic uh, um, uh, ontologies as well. But any community, let's say their file formats weren't represented in EDOM or some some uh, other ontology, they can always make their own. But these are also optional. So maybe you don't have an ontology yet. You can just skip putting format field on your workflow. Do you know how successfully CWL has been used in other domains? Um, it's hard to measure usage, um, but we have seen adoption, um, uh, as I mentioned, in, uh, in radio astronomy. It's, uh, they're quite keen on that because they have these big global collaborations, especially with uh, radio astronomy and the square kilometer array, There's many, many, um, uh, countries and regions involved, many institutions. And so that helps them solve almost a political problem of choosing which engine or you know which particular technical configuration for processing. Um, it means that all the different sites can make their own choices. Um, so, but we don't force people to tell us when they use CWL. So it's hard to say exactly who's using it where, but we definitely see papers, uh, mm -hmm. lots of papers from life sciences, from cancer, um, uh, other areas. Um, I'm excited also for physics and higher energy physics. And that we even got a bit of funding to help them out with. Oh, nice. As did radio astronomy. Um, and, and so for, um, and then geology and hydrology, that was the, uh, so for people who know European Open Science Cloud, they did a pilot and that many science demonstrators, CWL was involved in two of the science demonstrators, but neither of them were life sciences. So one was radio astronomy and one was this hydrology project. And the hydrology project is going ahead with CWL. Very nice. My last question uh, is about FAIR. You mentioned at the beginning of the talk that uh, FAIR was an important topic for CWL and actually having these pipelines in CWL uh, could help uh, the fairness of uh, these processes. Um, whenever CWL is publishing a 
catalog, in a workflow catalog, is there any metadata extracted that can be later parsed uh, by crawlers or so? Yeah, thanks. So it's a great question about metadata and CWL and registries. And um, a lot of this work is going on um, right now and at the hackathon, like with the workflow hub. So we've had a lot of questions over the years about how to do metadata and CWL. People, you know, should we document how the underlying tool works, um, authorship, all these questions really matter. Um, so one thing I didn't show is CWL's ability to have additional metadata fields. So as long as you prefix it, and let me just find a, an example. I think I remember. As long as you prefix it, you're allowed to add um, any metadata you want using any vocabulary. So it's again a lot of freedom there. Um, so in particular, we've been suggesting schema.org. So here we have a very long, complicated uh, CBL description for bowtie 2's align command. We're using schema.org schema um, metadata here. We've even set up this nice little shortcut. And so here they're saying, um, yeah, the people who made this, here's their ORCID. Here's where they are in their organization, right, to give them credit as well. Uh, and you can imagine all sorts of other fields. So this pulling this information up into the workflow hub uh, that's being developed by EOSC Life and RO crates is definitely happening and people are paying attention to. That's great. Quite much like when I see metadata. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, um, those were my questions. Uh, now, please, um, the people attending, do you have any question that you want to post to Michael now? I've got a question. Go um, ahead, Piotr. Yeah, Michael, first of all, well, let, let me thank you for all the hard work you're putting into CWL over the years. I mean, without you, uh, um, it probably would have stranded somewhere. Um, what I wanted to, to say um, first is that, um, and, and you, you, you kind of mentioned it implicitly, but I think CWL to me is mostly uh, interesting and great because of, you know, it, it, it implies a separation of concerns, right? On the first hand, you define tools as, as, uh, as objects, you could say. Then you define data sources as objects. And then you connect the dots, which are the workflows, right? So there are three levels of uh, separation. And this allows uh, great documentation of a workflow. And it allows for portability. And it makes it composable, too. Um, but I think the large downside is that um, it's, a, it's a huge step from you know, the traditional way we do scripting in bioinformatics, right? So do you have any suggestions for people, you know, who are coming from shell scripting? I mean, wh why, they, why they should, you know, st step to CWL and, and, and what, would, what would be the best route or route for them? Thanks, Peter, for the question and the nice comments. Um, th so this is a great question. Is it kind of about one way to answer it is about when to use CWL or any structured technique. <clears throat> so, right, there's other forms of structured computing. There's like semi-structured. Um, computational notebooks like Jupyter, um, and uh, you know, well, like, why not just hack away at the at the command line? And and all of these are fine, right? Like, all of these serve different needs. Nobody really sits down and writes a workflow from scratch. Even this one, yeah, I knocked it out, but I had this source document over here, right, where somebody had already done things and they had taken notes, and then we were able to piece that together into the workflow. And they probably didn't sit down to write this document one go, right? They made mistakes, they tried stuff out, maybe they had a bash script, maybe they used make or, you know, some other approach. Um, you know, maybe they scribbled on paper and worked on a whiteboard. You know, so CWL is very structured. You can do a quick and dirty version of it, and that's great. And you can add lots of detail. I, you know, reach for this level of structure when you need it. So are you collaborating across multiple institutions and maybe the structure will help you just be better organized and improve communication by being more explicit. Do you, are you submitting um, a diagnostic workflow, you know, software as a medical device 
to a regulator or for you know re peer review, I kind of hope you use a lot of structure there and make things really explicit, right? And, and easier to improve and co-create. Um, you're just playing around with something, don't use CWL. But all those other circumstances probably would make sense. So you can build up on it. Um, so we, you know, even at this biohackathon, we're seeing people using Snakemake and Galaxy and Nextflow and Whittle, and that's fantastic, right? Because they're fluent with that and it was easy for them. Um, and, uh, but at some point they may want to convert some of those to CWL for greater interoperability and, you know, archiving and other purposes. Once you have your workflow at all, which is just hard to create, even if you're running it on the command line, that's a lot of work to figure out how the tools work and what do you want to do with them. Moving it to any structured workflow system is kind of a, a lot of work, but moving it from that, from you know, one structured workflow system to another is easy because you've done already the hard work. You've got that model in your head and it's just a matter of converting syntax so don't worry about it, is the, is the answer. Reach for it when you need it. Um, if something else is easier for you, go do that. It's not wrong. When you need to move to CWL, it's going to be pretty simple. Hopefully, that was a sufficient answer for you. Absolutely. Um, maybe um, we should ask others for questions. Um, can people raise hands? I'm not sure they can uh, they can talk at the moment uh, later. Yes, I have admired uh, people, uh, so they should be able uh, to. I have allowed them to talk, so they should be able to unmute themselves. And um, if not for whatever reason, we still have opened the chat, uh, the chat and the question and answer. So we have we have a raised hand from Young Kim. So if he can unmute himself. Dan, I think. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think we uh, crossed. I mean, I, I unmuted and then I was told I was muted again. <laughs> Hello. Um, I, I was just, uh, well, I think wondering about this uh, well, in the same direction as, uh, uh, as Piotr did that, well, I mean, in, in terms of, well, well I mean, I, I'd like to find out more about how do you in actual practice compose workflows? I, I mean, uh, there's, there's quite a bewildering set of uh, well SAM tools based workflows well as we've seen in the um, uh, in the demo but then well I mean which which one well would I be using to to, to, to put together the particular um, uh, uh, well, well job that I'm trying to complete does it make sense Pardon me. Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Um, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing two, possibly two different questions. So one is, what are the tools and techniques for workflow composition? Maybe that was your question. Or the other question was maybe, how do you make the decisions about which tool to use? So could you clarify maybe which question or both? Uh, well, I mean, certainly number one. Um, uh, I mean, I'm I'm sort of wondering about this from from a maybe rather practical perspective. Um, uh, well, about well, I mean, is it is it possible to put together uh, well, I mean, something like a library of workflow components and then to work on top of these, yep. rather than to knock something up uh, every time where you join a new hack. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a common workflow. I mean, they can exist anywhere, but we've created a place to gather these libraries of components. So we call it the common workflow library. We have one specifically for the bio and life sciences. And uh, you can see we already have a lot of tool definitions. There's typically more than one in each of these directories. Um, and But even then, there's still a lot more out there. So you can kind of go find them. A place that's uh tries to sort of merchandise and make attractive tools and workflows along with their containers it's called docstore.org um, from our colleagues in uh, north america so again this is about a, a they started with cwl i guess now they have uh, other languages um, so it's about the tool 
plus the container. So it's if you're looking for containerized things, um, this library, they all have containers. The manual composition, you either do by text, editing the syntax, or you can do with a graphical editor. There's one called Rabbix available. It's a bit out of date at the moment. Um, it's pretty cool, but uh, they need to get up to date with the latest CWL versions. Uh, and I don't know the status of that. It's open source, but it's run by this company. And so we're, we, we're everybody loves it, but we just wish it was up to date because again, it's missing a few things here and there. Um, but it's that same group that made this plugin that we saw for Visual Studio. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be more interested in something that would be well, like some sort of a C, CWA make, if you like, where one thing I, where I, that I find doing myself fairly quickly is to move from, from, a, from a shell script to a make file, a uh, standard one, but um, uh, uh, and where from, where through that, from that angle, well, I, I mean, the few times I've come across CWL, well, it looked to me like, well, maybe it could be used like a make file, but well, I mean, you've got, well, like 10 times the number of lines somehow. Uh, I mean, is there some, some tool on top of CWL that would allow you to just specify the particular composition that, 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 that you want to carry out? Or, well, is that, well, maybe just not the, not the purpose of, 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 of CWL? Um, I mean, there are some like libraries for doing the workflow composition from code. I don't think it's quite what you're you're talking about, but um, we have these. Uh, it's the one I'm thinking of here. There's yeah, Python CWL Gen uh, or Script CWL. So these are kind, of, but I I mean a direct make file to CWL root we've looked into, but would be a little bit of a research project. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll never actually ever, ever have to write SAM tools index, right? That's been done. Um, so for, for that, it's more of a matter of just sort of selecting these things and plopping them in. You know, this you can just use as a GitHub subrepo, a git subrepo and, or submodule. So Michael- you just what, reference the tools you need. But maybe I'm not understanding the question. Michael, can I interrupt? This is uh, Piotr. Um, one nugget of gold I got from um, Brad Chapman uh, a few years back is that he said, you know, initially he tried to write CWL by hand, but he realized quite quickly it, much, it was much better to generate from, from code. So I think a number of his, um, his projects are actually Python code generating CWL, correct? Yeah, so the blue PC bio next gen, uh, that's the route they took. And I think that makes a lot of sense because they don't have a single workflow, right? They don't even have seven because each of those major things that they do, they customize to based on the technical design of the user's experiment. So they take predefined components and they compose them at runtime based on the description from the user. The user is not thinking about CWL. I think that's a great model, right? So um, yeah, if you're building a, a front end for a very flexible service, and you want to kind of customize it, the, the entire workflow based on some choices by the user, absolutely programmatic composition is uh, recommended and people do it, it's not so bad. That's great. Um, we, ha we, ha we should have Peter coming on uh, in a few minutes who will uh, discuss deploying CWL on, uh, on an Arvados uh, cloud cluster. So I think, uh, you know, I would like to ask everyone to, to hang on and, and stay here. So uh, before um, closing the CWL uh, presentation, Michael, I would like to ask you to please remind us all, if we tell about CWL to a friend and this friend asks us, okay, sounds great, where could I get started? What would it be a place uh, that you would recommend? Just a second, I'll show you. So, uh, of course, there is the CWL homepage, which I've shown a few times. And the uh, most important link here is the user guide. So, under getting started on the homepage, there's the user guide. Um, we do have a quick introduction in Japanese for those communities. 
Um, the user guide is based on the software carpentry templates. It's got lots of episodes. It's got um, some FAQ type things, some miscellaneous uh, things as well. We're ex trying to expand it to cover more and more of the standard. So if something seems that you, you don't know what to do here, there's always, uh, there may be things we just didn't document well enough. Also linked from the homepage is our discourse group. So our Q&A site. We used to use Biostars, that was great. Now we've moved to our own site. And lots of folks you can see here asking and answering questions. Um, if you prefer some real-time help, there is a Gitter chat room. And this is nice because you don't have to make another account. You probably have a GitHub or GitLab or Twitter account already. Uh, and you can also, if you find a nice solution here, you can just send a link to your, to your friends and they can go see that without having to log in. So I think it's kind of nicer than Slack for uh, public uh, peer support. And um, of course, there's a, there's a mailing list as well. But I think as far as learning, I would say the user guide is where I would start. Or you can also, there is a 60 second introduction video, 64 second introduction video on the homepage. Uh, we tried it out on Zoom earlier, the quality was bad. And uh, if people are just very new to workflows whatsoever, that's a, a great introduction as well. Thanks for the question. Thank you very much, Michael. So I guess we all know where to get more and more information and start working with uh, CWL. So let's going to make a pause now um, so you can have some coffee or so and then rejoin us in eight minutes um, for the Arvados webinar. Thank you very much, Michael. It was really nice having you here for this webinar as part of our biohackathon. Thank you.